Hi, I'm Penny. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm making my video about Venus in Leo and I'm doing every Venus sign. And each of them will actually be featured at the end of this video if you want to know about your compatibility with someone who has Venus in Leo. So what's cool about this placement is that Leo is ruled by the heart and Venus is the planet of love. So they're very warm, affectionate people, very showy with their love. They do learn to be a lot more discriminating about who deserves their love because <laughs> Leo's royalty and all. They let you know when they like you. Even if it was hard to get to that point, it's likely that they're not going to like you at first. You gotta win them over. Uh, you guys with Venus and Leo, I feel like one of the most difficult things for you is the fact that everyone else is more complicated than you are when it comes to relationships. They read into things more, they expect more, they're not simple about just loving and appreciating, and a lot of times they expect you to be that complicated as well. And you sit there and you say, I don't get why they're accusing me of this, that, and the other, and it's really not like that at all. Now, if you like someone, you're almost always going to let them know it, unless maybe you have your Venus in the 12th house or something like that. But if you don't like someone and you see that they like you a lot, you are the type to take advantage and you become like this love vampire, just seeing how much you can get out of it. You need other people to put a decent amount of effort into the relationship with you because you don't really like people right off the bat. I mean... You might think they're attractive, you might think they're appealing to you, but you don't like them with your whole heart, you know? You're not willing to do anything for them just yet, and they have to prove themselves to you. You guys might come across as being very stuck up because of your pride, and you don't want to feel like you like other people more than they like you. You want them to show you their affection and make you feel comfortable because you don't want to look like the loser in the situation. This also makes you a little bit guarded and reluctant to admit how much you like someone when you aren't already in the relationship and already have something good going on because you don't want to let yourself go into something that is harmful to you and that will destroy your sense of self. You try to love yourself before you love other people, which is great. Someone with Venus and Leo would rather let you think that they are an asshole and they're stuck up than actually explain to you that you are going to have to warm up to them and you're going to have to work your way into your heart and deserve your place next to them on the throne. When you wanna get involved in a relationship with them, the question is, Will you love them as much as they love them? If not, then you can fuck off. They don't put up with no bullshit. And you better not judge them if they don't want to wear makeup, if they're acting a certain way because they want unconditional love. And that's one of the things you're going to have to prove, that you didn't just like them for their looks. Granted, most of them are pretty attractive. And they're not really shallow people, so they don't want to be with someone who is shallow. They might act shallow, but they're really not. But that's how you guys screw yourselves over. You just march around like, I'm a gigantic bitch and I don't care what anybody else thinks of me. You just need to do a lot of things for me. And um, people just respond better when someone is pretending to be modest. Then a lot of people are going to be really mean to you because they're going to think that your head is too big and they're going to try to deflate it. But you know what? When you find the person who's not mad about your head being too big, that person is probably the one. If the relationship makes you feel insecure, then to you, it's really not a relationship at all. It's some kind of weird thing where someone got attached like a parasite and you can't get them to fuck off for some reason. It kind of becomes a vicious cycle of them making you feel insecure about yourself and you looking to them to try and feel 
better about yourself and that's why you let them keep clinging on and they're just going to keep draining you and draining you and draining you which is kind of the thing that you do to other people if you don't like them as well so the healthiest way for a relationship to work for anyone but especially you guys because sometimes you guys are better at having healthy relationships than other people are is to give what you get and you can end up in situations where you just think maybe if I can show someone how much I love them and how much I'm willing to do for them and if I send them all these nice gifts and shower them in my affection then uh, maybe they'll get that I'm the person who wants them to be happy and I'm the person that's meant for them but you know what that's not true you are not the person who is meant for them because they are not the person who is meant for you and what are they doing to reciprocate any of that you just have to remember to keep your self-esteem level healthy you're the type who's gonna want to be what someone never had give them the husband or wife that they never had to help see them through life and really truly love them but sometimes your desire to do that is a little bit more overwhelming and more powerful than your actual feelings and your sincerity sometimes you don't actually like people but it's almost like an emotional charity case you see that people need love and you want to give it to them regardless of whether or not you two are actually right for each other at all you are always going to be on one extreme or the other when it comes to relationships even if inside you're feeling conflicted and you're not really sure about what you want yet you're going to act in extreme terms it's either going to be like i love you you're the best person i've ever met in my life and you're going to hope that showing them that is beneficial to you in the long run or you're going to act kind of aloof like eh, i'm not really impressed by you just yet and that's when you're going to come across as a bitch you're gonna have lovers from your past who all have completely different things to say about you one's gonna say that you smothered them and you were too clingy and they just like couldn't get rid of you wow they have this girl who is completely obsessed with them good for them that really boosted their ego which is probably subconsciously what you intended to happen because you want to make people feel better about themselves and sometimes you do that by making yourself feel worse and look a little bit worse you know you do it at your own expense and your own sacrifice and then you're gonna have other people who will say she just didn't give a fuck about me all she cared about was herself she was so selfish she kept buying herself things and maybe that was meant to be a message to them you should be buying me this you should be trying to impress me because in the end I will be worth impressing Leo has this idea of love that people naturally deserve things. You deserve the love from the beginning, so that's why you're stuck up and waiting for people to give it to you. And there are also times when you think of it from the other side of the spectrum and think this person deserved love from the beginning and there have been all these instances where they just simply didn't get that so I'm going to give it to them right away and that's why you guys are only capable of having a healthy relationship when you learn that you need to take a step back let them prove themselves a little bit and if you could try to communicate a little bit better as well rather than just um, wearing your pride and flaunting your pride all over the place try to actually explain to them that you just need to know that they are worth your time and you want to show them that you will do the same things that they will do for you but you don't want to get taken advantage of and once you both can establish that higher moral ground where you both treat each other like royalty then that is when you're capable of having a very simple and healthy relationship high expectations but still simple and easy to please it's not always about money. A lot of times it's just what you show that your priorities are. You guys don't want to fight and you want to be able to spend the majority of your time having fun and enjoying your partner. But sometimes a quick little fight can satisfy you every now and then just so you know that the other person cares. 
But relationships can move very quickly for you guys. I feel like they work out better for you long term if you try to make them work a little bit slower just to make sure that you're both equals and you're both on the same page. But you can fall in love very quickly. You can have a relationship that lasts a week and then you can spend another week, if not just a few days, getting over that and then you move right on to the next person because your heart heals a lot more quickly. You don't let things destroy you when you go through a breakup because why should they? Honestly, it doesn't mean that you're shallow. I mean, a lot of people are going to look at that as you being shallow. It just means you know how to get over stuff. You can feel it to the full extent and you can just drop it like it's hot. But this Venus placement is very prone to infatuation and flavor of the week kind of thing. However, when you actually get serious about someone, it's hard for you to let them go. You're loyal to them. You want to stay where you are content and where you feel that you belong. And because of that, you're actually very open-minded when it comes to relationships. You're willing to go on a date with anyone at least once and see what they're like, even if you thought they weren't really your type or you were kind of skeptical about dating someone younger than you or you're not usually into people of that style. And this non-discriminating point of view allows you to find true love. I mean, you might have certain standards about they need to have a decent job or they need to have liked me for good reasons and not just because of how much money I have or how good looking I am because you recognize that as being shallow. And everyone's going to walk around complaining that you're hypocritical because you seem so shallow and they claim that you're the one that is but you are willing to jump off a bridge for the people that you love. Sometimes you jump off that bridge just because it's romantic and basically only for the fuck of it. No challenge is too big for you when it comes to relationships and what you'll do for your family and your significant other. Like if you got into a car accident with someone that you love and you were out in the middle of nowhere and they lost your leg, but you guys needed to walk back into civilization, you'd probably cut off your leg and sew it onto their body. Just like, here, let me give you my leg. And then you just walk back on one leg for them. And then a month later, you two break up and they leave you for someone who seems like they're not even worthy at all. And it makes absolutely no sense. And then you're just like, fuck, why did I give them my leg? And then for a while, you're mad at yourself, but then you realize, you know what? They can keep my fucking leg. I didn't need it. I can get a new one because people love me enough to give me their leg all the time. Now in the bedroom, <laughs> the thing you guys will brag about the most is the one thing that you weren't willing to try because it proves to you that you weren't willing to try everything and you do have limits but you're probably willing to try more things than most people are you guys like to tell stories about the craziest thing that someone wanted to do to you once and then you didn't let them but I don't hear you talk a lot about all the things you've let people do but sometimes I just find little traces of it you know what I mean you basically like whatever your partner likes and you like them so you're willing to be open-minded about it and you're like I can do this for you now what it would be like for you to be with Venus and Aries this relationship seems kind of like neither one of you really care that much but it just happened anyway they might come across as seeming shallow to you because they like you right off the bat this can easily move forward and become a committed relationship if you two do really like each other. And the person with Venus and Aries will be very eager to prove themselves to you, which is something that you really appreciate. Now, it might be a little bit difficult to make sure that both of your needs are met because it's more likely that they're trying so hard to prove themselves to you that you kind of forget that you planned on reciprocating all of that to begin with. Now someone with Venus and Taurus 
they're not even really going to try and prove that they have an interest in you. So you might find it hard to be interested. You'll probably agree that they're attractive, you can get along with them, but they're just not going to give you what you need from a relationship. But what you're not thinking about when you turn them down is that they are going to be a stable, committed, and consistent, I say that with great hesitation, consistent relationship partner. What I mean by consistent is they're not going to be able to move on no matter how awful it is. And if you guys bother committing to each other at all, you will probably be stuck together forever and it'll be like a bull and a lion locked in a cage together and that's not what anyone came to the zoo to see. But you are both kind of mellow and you don't really like drama. The fighting is inevitable, but so is the makeup because you're going to be able to remember that you do like each other. Now people with Venus and Gemini, you don't really know what the fuck is going on with them, but you do recognize that they need to be loved and that there's a part of them that really has never been satisfied by anything before. So you're going to try your best to give them everything that they deserve. They're going to overanalyze you though. They're not really going to understand your simplicity because they are complicated. You may end up feeling like you're unappreciated and nothing that you're doing is being reciprocated, but it's mostly because they're just standing there kind of confused about what is even going on. So you're definitely going to need to try and communicate to them. If you're interested in someone who has Venus in Cancer, you're probably going to have to get them to come out of their shell a little bit. Just like gently prod them, encourage them. You're going to have to put your pride on the back burner and be the one who takes interest in them, makes them feel embraced first. And you'll probably feel more comfortable doing that with them because you know that it's going to be returned back to you. But you two can have a very sweet and caring, cuddly relationship together. If you act cocky and full of yourself in front of them, though, they're going to snap back and they're probably going to hit you with some type of insult or make you feel like you were just wrong for what you said. Someone else with Venus and Leo is easy for you to recognize as being an equal. You're the king and the queen or the queen and the queen and the king and the king, whatever. That's good. But... What you might be lacking is a sense of purpose in the relationship. What are we actually doing this for? It's because I'm great and you're great and we're just going to be great together and live our lives being great. And then you're like, oh, great. Well, that was great. I'm going to go live my life with a lunatic now instead because I think that lunatic needs more love than you do because you already love yourself and I already love myself and... Everything is square and even. Now, someone with Venus and Virgo will just pick you apart to the point where it's hard to actually feel comfortable getting involved in a relationship at all because you can't figure out what is going on in their crazy little head. And they are all too aware of what's going on with you and it makes you feel too vulnerable and like you just wasted your energy on something that's never going to happen. They will analyze the shit out, out of you and they're at least going to recognize that you're not that complicated and they're going to know that things are even more simple than you are making them sound when you're sitting there trying to explain yourself. But it's not really going to be comfortable for anyone because the Venus and Virgo response to your outpour of emotion and affection is basically just going to be like, I have feelings too. Feelings! Everybody has them, but it doesn't mean that we have to talk about them. And if you so choose to try and shower them in your affection and spoil them, they're probably going to be insulted on a very slight level. They will like it, but they're going to think you're trying to interfere with their independence and you're giving them a bunch of things that they don't really need. But you're still cute for trying. Venus and Libra with you sounds like a hot, steamy, passionate romance where you have candlelit dinners and whew, you just, you go straight to the bedroom afterwards.
But you might kind of be wondering why they're trying to get into a relationship with you. It might be interpreted as them being shallow because you think they were just trying to, you know, have a fun affair with you and you weren't expecting all this other stuff. It will be difficult to turn this into an actual relationship because they're going to think it's not fair that you just wanted them to spoil you and then they're not even going to get anything back. And probably what they wanted back was the right to claim you. And then you're all like, I can't be tamed. I'm a wild beast. Wow. But then you're like, ah, well, this isn't so bad. They put me in a cage, but it has a lot of really nice soft cushions and luxury items and it's actually kind of comfortable. Venus and Scorpio. Oh god. Oh god. Why? I don't want any part of whatever drama is happening between the two of you. Just please leave me out of it. It's gonna be some kind of stupidly pointless battle about which one of us fucking cares more. Who did more for who and who is the shallow one and who isn't and who is a bigger asshole but you're gonna have such a deep and passionate connection that you might get to the point where you feel you can't possibly leave one another it might feel like a little bit of an imprisonment because both your egos are just way too big when it comes to what you're doing for other people in relationships and also when the other person's doing something for you, you might kind of let it go to your head and you might act like you're just taking advantage of them for a while and forget to be humble and that you really genuinely like them. If you want to date someone who has Venus and Sagittarius, you're probably going to have to take the approach of trying to impress them at first. And the best way to do that is emphasize how impressive you are. I wouldn't go out of your way to do things for them right away. Just let them know that you're a very desirable partner and that you could be with anyone you possibly want. They will know better than to judge and criticize you for being shallow. They're going to see you more clearly for who you actually are and see your complexities without making you more complex than you actually are. But at the same time, they might be able to take a lot of the things you do for granted. And you're going to have a fun relationship together, but you might take them for granted in the fact that they're so ambitious and so exciting and all over the place because you'd rather them just be there with you. But at the same time, the reason why you like them in the first place is because they are interesting and they're not boring and they're not just going to sit at home with you all of the time. This actually turns you into more of the homemaker type because you like it when they come home with stories to tell and they seem like they have a very interesting life and it's a source of entertainment for you and sometimes it might even feel like you're living vicariously through them and you might feel a little bit unfulfilled. Now Venus and Capricorn, to these people, money, actions, status, they really speak. So you probably are going to have to do things for them right off the bat to get their attention and get their commitment because they don't just jump around to anyone without there being a sense of commitment. They might start to feel like a bus that's never coming though because Capricorn thinks way far ahead. They might be thinking about things they're gonna do for you 10 years from now and you're more in the moment. Like, let's do things for each other now. Let's show our appreciation now because the future might never happen if we don't. And you're going to have to try and meet each other halfway and get one another to understand that. And if you can get on the same page, then you can probably grow a lot from this relationship with one another and have things that you wouldn't be able to have in most relationships things that you wouldn't have learned to experience without this other person showing you, even though at first you don't really get it. Venus in Aquarius is going to like the fact that you're kind of quirky. They're going to be excited and intrigued by you and amazed that even though you're so simple and so easy to please, you're also very on point and 
the way you behave is actually very wise and they might feel like for all their complexities and knowledge that they have about relationships and all their supposed wisdom, they're still not capable to act accordingly like you are. And that's something that they're really going to admire about you. But you might start to feel like they're taking advantage of you because they're so caught up like reflecting on everything and seeing the big picture and you are a little bit more action oriented. You might find that you just keep doing more and more and more to try and get them to like you and then it's what's really hard is getting them to show that they like you because they probably liked you from day one and you've been fighting a battle that you had already won but it feels like there wasn't really any reward for it so you didn't even realize that you had won. If you can get them to express themselves more then this will be a relationship where both of you can end up feeling like you are fully appreciated and you become whole people. When you get involved with someone with Venus and Pisces, you're probably going to feel like you don't really have any idea whether or not they like you because you just have so very, very different ways of expressing your love. And Venus and Pisces can project it more out as infinite feelings and you probably won't pick up on it as much unless you're sensitive to things and you are more about worldly extravagant displays of affection and big proposals, romantic situations that will be something to remember forever. And Venus and Pisces will be able to value that and have the same appreciation for it as you do um, even if they don't have the motivation to make it happen and organize these events. You know, you two can be fun and creative together and um, if you can appreciate and believe and feel that they're going to love you unconditionally, then you will be satisfied in the relationship. But at first, there's going to be a lot of confusion about what is even going on between the two of you. Thank you for watching my video. If you want a personalized interpretation of your entire chart, you can check out the variety of readings I have available on my website. And make sure that you are subscribed to my channel so you can see all my other Venus videos come out and see what I say about your Venus sign and each one and your compatibility with anyone and everyone you've ever been in a relationship with or a friendship or anything close to being in a relationship because every encounter with a person is a relationship even if it's not a romantic and committed one. But I hope you have a fantastic day and I love you guys. Thank you for watching my video. Mwah!